Hi everyone. In today's video, I'm going to do a detailed review of a 2008 Polaris Sportsman 500HO. Polaris made the 500 in this body style from 2006 to 2013. They updated the styling a bit in 2011, where they changed the headlights on the front end a bit, and they also changed the plastic rack style. In 2014, they kept the same body style still, but they updated the engine to a 570, which bumped up the horsepower from 35 to about 44. 35 horsepower doesn't sound like very much by today's standards, but I really never felt that that machine needed more horsepower. The Honda Rincon 680 was a much bigger engine, but it only put out around the same horsepower. I owned my 2008 Sportsman until 2015 and put 3,000 miles on it, which is roughly 5,000 kilometers. I'm doing this review because I've had several people ask me what I've thought about those machines because they were thinking of buying a used one. I owned several Polaris Sportsmans over the years and this was probably my favorite one, even though it wasn't the most powerful and it didn't have power steering, but it did have a lot of nice features that I'll mention. The particular machine that I'm reviewing was the 500 HOLE or the deluxe model, depending on where they were sold. They came with a set of very nice looking 12 inch aluminum wheels, which came with 26 inch tires that were 9 inches wide in the front and 11 inches in the rear for a bit of extra grip. Those tires were taller and wider than most machines at the time. The LE also came with fuel injection, as a lot of the other 500 HOs only came with carbureted engines. It had a really nice automotive style paint job that looked great, especially when I would put a coat of wax on it. It also came with engine braking, hill descent control, a built-in watertight storage box that was in the rear between the rear tail lights. It had a flip-up rack on the front that had quite a bit of storage underneath on the front, but it wasn't waterproof, it was considered water resistant but I almost never got any water in there, and not from a lack of trying. The racks back then were made of a very tough composite plastic that were much tougher than the racks that are on the Sportsman's made since then. It also came with a 3,500 pound winch and a synthetic rope, and I added the Polaris Glacier Quick Connect Snowplow, which was a lot of fun to use. In addition to the standard features that it came with, I added heated grips, heated throttle, a headlight mod that would put all three lights on when I put the high beams on, a handy set of backup lights that would come on automatically when I put the machine in reverse, and I bought a set of extremely tough ATV Guru front and rear bumpers for it. The 500cc engine in these machines were very durable and they were basically bulletproof in my opinion. They weren't made by Polaris back then, but they were made by Fuji Heavy Industries. It even came with a pull cable, although I never needed to use it. When I sold it in 2015, it was almost 8 years old and had the original belt on it and never had any problems with it. I would always take my time to stop and put it in low gear when going up steep hills or through mud or over large obstacles. I really liked that machine, but in the end I sold it because I wanted something with power steering and something a little narrower in the middle. I used to joke to my friends that sometimes it felt like I was riding a horse. Every year I do a 7-10 to 10 day ATV trip and I would spend up to 10 hours a day on the machine and after a few days I would really notice the width of the machine. Also, the thumb throttle on those machines would cause my thumb to ache a bit after hours of use, and I've met some other people that had Polaris's that told me the same thing. So I added a throttle extender, and that pretty much fixed the problem for the most part. I drove several of my friends' ATVs at the time, and I always found the Sportsman was the most comfortable machine. Now before you get on your keyboard and start writing me a nasty gram, please keep in mind I'm not bashing any machines. Uh, I really like pretty much all machines. There's something to like about all of them. The suspension on those machines were like Cadillac comfort. They used struts back then on the front ends, and I found that those were more comfortable and handled a little better than the newer models that used the double A arms. I had a few friends that had Honda Rincons that tried my machine. They were amazed at how controlled and stable that that old Sportsman felt. I did have a few electrical problems with that Sportsman. One time I burned out a wiring harness uh, when I was snow plowing. I think I just overloaded the system. I think it was my own fault. I had all the lights on. I had to reverse and go forward several times, so the reverse lights kept coming on. Uh, and I was constantly using the winch to raise and lower the plow. So I probably should have put a bigger stator uh, on that machine. Another time, uh, the fuse box got overloaded, and uh, one of the fuses was a bit corroded, and I was blowing up an air mattress when we were camping uh, with the 12-volt power outlet with the engine off. Again, probably my fault. Um, and after that, my friend Dwayne replaced the fuse block for me with inline fuses that he soldered in there, and I never had a problem with it again. And one of the only other issues that I can remember was uh, a speedometer cable that went I had to have replaced, but that was a pretty cheap fix. Yeah, I would highly recommend one of these machines as a used machine, especially if you can find one with low miles that was looked after. 
The all-wheel drive system worked flawlessly uh, with it, and basically the only uh, drawback to the Polaris system, the all-wheel drive system, if you're not familiar with it, is that uh, power doesn't go to the front wheels all the time when you're in all-wheel drive mode. Um, uh, so if you're coasting or going down a hill with your thumb off the throttle, you only have engine braking in the rear, which can cause your back tires to lock up on you. If you're going less than 15 miles an hour or 25 kilometers an hour, they have a hill descent mode that you can put the machine in that will use your brakes to slow the front wheels down. So it basically emulates four wheel engine braking. But if you're going faster than that, it doesn't work. If you buy one of these machines, I think you'll have good luck with it. Here's a few shots of the 500 in action when I owned it. Thanks for watching, and if you liked the video, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel.